Are you curious about using an iPad for landscape design? I'm using an app called Mofolio Trace to do all sorts of things like working with plants, planning your layout, to site renderings, and even exporting to scale. And I'll show you how I use this plant library with over 100 species that you can grab for free. I had a student who used to do these kind of layouts entirely on AutoCAD. And I taught her how to do the same thing using entirely trace paper and the tools that we have in Morpholo Trace. So this is my version of her layout drawn with a pencil inside Morpholo Trace. And I've used this circle tool, which is really handy. So it will show you the exact diameter or radius of a plant species. And the cool thing about this is you can actually typing the exact diameter or radius in here. So if I type in three feet, this will show me exactly what a three foot circle is. And then from here on onwards, I can just lock this and I can maybe pick a blue color. I can start to lay out my, my plants as, as you've seen in this larger drawing. And from this point onwards, what I did was to actually ink it. The finished drawing actually composed of, of these trace layers. So the first layer is the similar kind of the, the background footpath with pavers and the roads. And then I slowly build this on top with another layer for just the, the, the plants, the circles and different layouts. And then on top of that, it's the layer for trees. And the reason is I don't want to overlay them onto the same layer. So this is a really good example of what a, you know, a non-destructive workflow looks like. And then I believe I had a one more layer on top. And this is just the annotation and the text. So from here, what I'll actually show you is the coloring process. So I'm actually going to turn off these background layers because we don't actually need them anymore. So the coloring follows a similar principle where I, I color in layers. So make sure you color in layers so that you can actually edit the color individually or as a whole to that particular layer. So you can see this color is more of the, the accent flowers and the species. And then this is more the green, the trees falls on a different layer. And then this layer is the layer where I put on a little bit of magic. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if I made this all the way opaque, you can see that I've actually used this pencil called the grease pencil right here. So what this does is it's gonna give you a little bit more texture, you know, like the pencil look of this. So if I just do it selectively in a couple of areas, in the highlights, in the shadow, what this is gonna give me is just a little bit more noise or, or texture to the finished drawing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to make this paper opacity all the way down. So you can see the, the difference between having this off and on and then you need these areas it just blends the digital look a little bit more and then the layer on top is a shadow layer and this layer is put on multiply so that the shadow blends in with the, the coloring below and then this one last layer is just a couple of highlights using a a pen sort of a look and i believe i actually had a layer turned off by accident so okay so this layer turned on this is actually the background the poche the the footpath so from here Onwards, you might be wondering, what if I wanted to put some legends or a title block? And I might show you that right now. But there's just one more thing you might be wondering is, you know, as a landscape designer, what if you want to use title blocks, stencils, and things of that nature? Maybe you have a library that you've used over the years that you want to bring in here. This particular drawing, what I show is all hand-drawn. Everything is hand-drawn from scratch, but you might have something like this. So I've actually created the, this file. Uh, from scratch for available for my students. I'm gonna bring this in and show you if you had a stencil library like this, what I would do is I'm going to bring this up just a little bit and then I'm gonna hit on okay. And on the very top, what I can do is I can, I can build another layer. What I'll do here is I'll create another empty layer and I'll move this layer below so that I can start to, let's imagine if we didn't have all the line weights if we didn't have any of the colors if we were starting just from these red pens this layout layer what i can do right now is i can bring any of these species that i've used in the past into this empty layer and then i will start to maybe make them bigger smaller i can start to duplicate things i can enlarge I can flip them to make them less uniform. And then I can just go ahead and grab another maybe plant 
do the same thing, bring it in here. So I imagine if you have things like this, you have like some go-to species that you like to use over and over again. This is maybe a, a library of things that you can create and develop for yourself. Like I have some that are created over a hundred actually for my students. So these are the things that you can bring in if you don't want to manually draw over. So this in this very last step, I'll show you the I'll show you the tip for bringing in a title block. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. You can actually see this is the title block that I brought in. And this is essentially copy and paste it from a external file, which is a 24 by 36 inch quarter inch title block that I pasted into here. So you can see this is actually just the image layer. So if I wanted to export this, you know, I imagine like if you had a legend like this and a title block, maybe a box for description, and then you're ready to export this. Let's maybe just turn off the watercolor paper texture so that it's a little bit less distracting. So let's say you are ready to export this onto a 24 by 36 inch, which is the arc D size title block. We can go to our PDF, our best export setting. And then I'm gonna go ahead and find this title block, which is gonna be this one right here. And uh, it's a little annoying, but you do have to just remember to turn off all the other layers and I'm not gonna do it. There's, there's quite a bit of layers to turn off, but this is the layer that I'm interested in plotting out. And you can see I've already exported this before. So here you can select the paper size, which I've selected as 24 by 36, and then add a quarter inch scale. So this is already predetermined for this particular size. And from on here, you can just export this as a PDF.